welcome to Wake Up Wildcats. I'm Riley Price. And I'm Caitlin Deal. Today is Thursday, February 29th, and it is a B-Day. The weather for today will be partly sunny with a high of 51 and a low of 31. Today for lunch, there will be a choice of Dorito walking taco or pepperoni stuffed sandwich. Tomorrow, there will be the choice of mini corn dogs or fish filet on a whole wheat bun. Twenty twenty four is a leap year, and the question arises: Why do we have leap years? Well, the Earth takes one year to revolve around the sun, right? Not exactly. It actually takes three hundred sixty five point two four two two days. So when you subtract and find the difference, it's not zero. We realized we're behind about five point eight hours each year. While this is a small number over decades and centuries, this would have an impact on our calendar. In 100 years, our calendars would be off 24 days. So, for example, instead of the first day of spring being on March 19th, without a leap year, it would be on February 23rd, and so on and so forth. To help synchronize the time, the solution that was introduced centuries ago, we add one day every four years. Problem solved, right? Not quite. When you subtract the amount of time it takes for the Earth to complete one revolution around the sun, with our solution you find out we're still about 11 minutes off each year. And over 100 years, our calendar would be about 18 hours off, which doesn't sound like a huge problem, but over centuries, this would eventually throw off our calendar. To help bring this number closer to zero, we'll actually skip leap years to help realign the calendar to the solar year. But the rules are very specific. To help understand this, we can use leap year hop scotch to solve the problem. You skip a leap year if it falls on the start of a century, unless that year is divisible by 400. So for example, every four years, we'll acknowledge the extra day in February. But in the year 2100, we will skip that leap year since one, it falls on the start of a century, and two, it is not divisible by 400. Back in the year 2000, that was a leap year. But since it was divisible by 400, we did not skip it. This is easy to understand, right? With this added solution, the current average is 365.2425, which is a lot closer to the solar year. But unfortunately, we're still off by decimals, to be exact, about 26 seconds ahead each year. At this rate, it would take over 3,000 years to be off by one day, which some would say is close enough. Spring AP exam registration and payment is happening now. Students who are in spring semester AP classes who would like to take the AP exam, please log into your AP classroom to click yes to order your exam. Once registered online, payment can be made through our online school payment system. Payments will be accepted through Thursday, March 7th. For questions, please email Ms. Fannin in the counseling office. For students in year-long or fall classes who would like to be included as a late order, please contact Ms. Fannin directly for registration and payment methods. Another day, another opportunity to give back. Anchor Club is holding a food drive to collect items to support our local food banks. They're collecting things like peanut butter, tuna, baby formula, pasta, and other non-perishable items until next Friday. Look for the boxes throughout the school. Attention, anyone interested in the engineering field, come out and bring your parents to the NHS panel discussion at 7 tonight in the auditorium. Engineers from different areas will discuss different topics, including sustainability and AI, and they will also offer insight on their journeys to their present jobs. It's Book Talk Thursday, and today we have Ms. Higginbotham with her recommendation. Hi, good morning. I'm Erin Higginbotham, one of the PE teachers here. If I want to escape time, I listen to music. If I want to travel but can't, I can at least have my mind be somewhere else when I read. This book, Refugee by Alan Gratz, is an incredible read. At first, I found it a little slow, but then I couldn't put it down. It's a thriller, action-packed. It's a historical fiction book bringing to life true events. There are three separate stories that happen during three different time periods that you would think don't have any connection to one another, but at the end, they are beautifully tied together. This book is so well written, making you feel like you are there, living and breathing through these societal injustices. Ladies, get up. Look at her sitting in the gym. 75, each of you. Stand up. Unbelievable. Tragic oppression. What? There's no food or drinks in the gym. Throw that away. Throw that away. The world.
<laughs> Go exercise. No, but seriously though, from Jews fleeing Nazi Germany during the Holocaust, to Cubans escaping hunger and oppression under Fidel Castro, to Syrians who are still fleeing their country in search of safety today, this book helps you to have compassion for people who may be from a different country or have a different religion. Refugee helped me to appreciate my life and know that whatever I'm going through, other people have made it through such devastating tragedies. This is not your Hallmark or Disney book. There is sad stuff here. But if they can push on, so can I. I am more encouraged, more grateful, and more compassionate because of reading this book. Thanks, Ms. Higginbotham Wildcats. It's not too late to save a life or three. You can still sign up today during all lunches for the blood drive happening tomorrow. Make sure to stop by for this opportunity. Time to wrap it up with the joke which comes from Junior Addison Lease. Caitlin, what do you call two ducks and a cow? What, Riley? Quackers and milk. Oh, I get it. Well, anyways, that's all for today, Wildcats. I'm Caitlin Deal. And I'm Riley Price. Wake up, Wildcats. And make it a great day.